Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to DevSlips. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about coding boot camps. Coding boot camps, are they worth it? Should you go to a coding boot camp? And what are some of the underlying things that you might be missing when it comes to coding boot camps? Now, before I go any further, just understand as a disclaimer, as a warning, we take education very seriously. And when we see problems like this, it's important for us to bring those problems to the light. So first of all, let's talk about some of the benefits of coding boot camps because we we don't want to start bashing on things without telling you some of the good things that they have to offer. Now, number one is the mentorship. And at DevSlopes, we believe mentorship is key. We are pro advocates for having a mentor when it comes to learning how to code. In fact, we think it's the most effective and efficient way to become a developer. Mentorship matters. And a lot of boot camps, they work in the classroom like setting, which is a great and proven way to learn anything. Secondly, is you get to work with a community. And what I mean by that is there's other students alongside you facing the exact same problems you're going down, following the exact same material you're following, and you're really not doing this on your own. You have a mentor and you have students alongside you that you can collaborate with and connect with. And these are two very important things when it comes to learning a skill like programming. It's as close to a college environment that you can get without having to actually pay for college. And lastly, a lot of coding boot camps seem to do a pretty decent job when it comes to technical training. They have a good idea of what you need to be learning when it comes to the technologies you need in order to land a job. Now that we covered some of the great things about coding boot camps, we're going to talk about some of the problems when it comes to programming with coding boot camps. Now, the biggest one is the cost, the cost of a coding boot camp compared to other alternatives. Coding boot camps can be expensive and you can find yourself paying tens of thousands of dollars in order to attend one. For example, you're looking to pay upwards of 30 to $40,000 just to attend a 12 to 16 week coding boot camp. And that's where the other problem lies. Coding boot camps are very, very short amount of times and they're promoted in a way that says basically things like this, learn to code in 12 weeks, learn to code in 16 weeks, learn to code in three months. Now. Like I said, we're an educational institution. We teach people coding. What we don't do and what we hate most of all is this false narrative that you can become a developer in as little as three months. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm not saying there aren't people that have done it. But if you look holistically at someone trying to become a developer, on average, they're not gonna be able to learn everything they need to learn to be proficient enough to land a job in as little as three months. And this is where the problems start. Because if we look at the if we look at the journey of someone joining a, a coding boot camp and the, the end result, it doesn't always look great. And while yes, there are a lot of testimonials out there of people who do finish coding boot camps and go out and land jobs, you can't ignore the flaws that coding boot camps have. So coding boot camps are short. They're as little as three to four months long, and you're kind of in a rushed process. I'm gonna get into what exactly that process looks like a little bit later, but I wanna talk about something very important. We know they're expensive, so how do coding boot camps combat their expense? The answer to that is something called ISAs. So income share agreements, that's what ISAs stand for. Income share agreements basically say this, you don't have to pay for the program until you land a job. Now on the outside, this sounds great. You're thinking, okay, great. I don't have to pay for the program until I get a job in programming. That sounds awesome. It sounds, it sounds extremely motivating. You're basically saying I'm guaranteed a job. The problem is, is if you look at these traps, you'll see that it doesn't really matter what job you get. For example, if you're learning how to code and you go to a coding bootcamp for three to four months and you don't learn everything you need and you're not able to land a job, it doesn't matter what career you get. You could be working at Walmart as a manager and still have to pay off your coding bootcamp with the income share agreement. So that's where the problems kind of start. A lot of bootcamps feed you this information that seems very motivating when in reality, at the end of the day, you might not be able to become a developer at the end and you might be left with this mass amount of debt. Next, we're gonna talk about graduation rates. A lot of bootcamps like to flex their graduation rates. And this is the exact same thing that Bloom Tech got sued for is because they were telling everybody they have 86% of job placement rates. Now that data makes sense if you look at it from this perspective of, okay, I graduated this coding bootcamp and I got a job and I'm now paying my income share agreement, but it doesn't specify that it's a coding job. It's just saying they got a job after they finished a coding bootcamp. Do you see how kind of ridiculous that may sound? Same thing applies when it comes to the graduation rates. 
Bloom Tech was just blatantly lying because if you look at the fine print, their job placement rates and graduation rates when it came to the people who actually became developers sat around 26 to 40 percent. That's a big difference from 86 percent. And so people can easily look at this information and be really, really motivated by it. But when they look at the finer details, they understand that they were very, very, very well misled. And that's a big reason why here at Deathsloops, we don't really talk about graduation rates. And the reason for that being is we have a different perspective. We're like, if you wanted us to tell you our graduation rates, it's basically 100%. And the reason for that is because we don't stop until you get a job in programming. But we don't even mention that. We don't even like to say you have 100% get a job because it also is dependent on the person. It's also dependent on yourself. If you were to go to a program or a coding boot camp and they say, hey, you have an 86% chance of landing a job, but you yourself kind of slacked and you didn't really, you know, put in the effort with programming and you didn't get the job, that's not necessarily the institution's fault. If that does that kind of make sense? I'm not saying you guys are doing that by all means. I'm just saying that's the problem with graduation rates is they can be flexed and flipped in any way that can benefit the company. And that's why here at DevSolves, we don't even talk about graduation rates because we understand the implications that come with talking about graduation rates. So now you know about ISAs, now you know about graduation rates, now you want to have a pretty solid understanding of these kind of traps that you don't really want to fall down. Now let's talk about the actual experience of a coding bootcamp. You're a student, you're enrolled into a coding bootcamp. What does that experience look like? Now, number one, it's awesome you get men uh, mentorship. Like that's the most important thing. We can't even, we can't even, we can't even say that's a bad thing. We have nothing to complain about there. The only thing I will say is this. When you're in these three to four month long boot camps, these are incredibly fast. These are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly fast paced. And anyone looking to become a developer, it's going to be difficult to learn everything you need about code in order to land a job in three to six months. No, we're talking this is a 16 to 18 month long process if we're being realistic. So you go to this coding boot camp that basically said you're going to learn to code in three to four months. You're enrolled. You're in the program. You're starting to learn. What happens when you fall behind? What happens when you fall behind? Because everything's moving at such a fast pace and you're kind of rushed in and out of the boot camp that when you fall behind, it's very difficult for the mentors to spend time with you specifically. The reason for that is because they are worried about the graduation rates. So it's easy for coding boot camps to pick favorites than it is to just focus on everybody. They want to get as many people as they can to become proficient developers. And if you're falling behind and you only have two months left of the program, it's going to be very frustrating because a mentor really won't spend that time with you because they're already finding the students that are succeeding in the program that they want to be their next testimonial. Does that kind of make sense? It's basically like picking favorites in high school and everybody else gets kind of left behind, especially if you're not maybe as proficient in programming as they would like you to be. So this sort of bias and lack of transparency can be very unmotivating and it can lead to the problems that we see now with coding boot camps, which is lawsuits, which are very well deserved when it comes to these boot camps. So now let's say you finished the coding boot camp. You, you went through, you learned, you know, a pretty decent amount about code, but you didn't learn everything. And one thing that you didn't learn especially is how to go out and land a job. You see, coding boot camps, they can focus so much on the technical skills that they lack what is some of the most important skills, which is the soft skills and career development skills. It's okay to learn how to code and learn how to write the technical stuff, but what's the use of that if you don't even know how to go out and get a job? You don't know how to make a resume. You don't know how to crush coding interviews, which are an entire landscape in themselves. See, coding is such a more broad field than these people make it out to be. They pretty much say like, yeah, just learn this technical stuff, learn these languages, and you're good to go. That's not the case. That's not the case. And now just to kind of recap, just to kind of recap over everything. You have an idea of... ISA agreements and why they can be a problem because it doesn't really matter what job you get, you still have to pay. You have an understanding of graduation rates and how a lot of coding boot camps flex their graduation rates, but in the fine details, they're actually a lot lower than what they say they are. You have an idea of what the experience is like and how it's a rushed process. And that odds are you're probably not gonna learn everything you need to know when it comes to landing a job in programming. All this information is just to kind of give you guys more than what you're going to get on a coding boot camps website. It's to understand that when it comes to picking an educational institution and when it comes to going down the road of coding boot camps, really have all of the research done before you spend thirty to forty thousand dollars on a program. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and spare you guys why Dev Slopes is better and all of the good things that we do. Like I said, if you wanna check that stuff out, by all means, go do your research and check out Dev Slopes and see you know, the comparison, comparing and trust. But one thing I will say is that we are not going to flex graduation rates. We don't even mention them on our calls or on our websites. We aren't a three month long program. We're 16 to 18 months because we know that you can't learn to code in three months. And we're not gonna ask you to go ahead and uproot your life in order to join our coding bootcamp. We have no physical location, we're completely online, and we understand that you need flexibility in order to match your schedule. So like I said, this video is just to give you guys some more information on coding boot camps. Guys, when you're looking at learning to code and when you're looking at picking an educational institution in order to learn how to code, keep all of these things in mind. Keep all of these things in mind. Look at the fine print of everything and don't just dive in because these companies seem to be, you know, flexing all of their rates and flexing all of their pros. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope this gives you guys more of uh, a more in-depth information on coding boot camps. Like I said, these resources, these things that I'm telling you about come basically from the lawsuits as well as the students that have literally joined coding boot camps and come to DevSlips after because they did not learn enough from coding boot camps. I think in later videos I'm actually going to do an interview with students that have gone to coding boot camps that way you guys can hear it from them and not just take it from me but that's it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching be sure to hit that subscribe button and i can't wait to see you guys in the next video peace